Today on What's What's that that we have an interesting guitar, a beginner guitar. This is the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 and I got this guitar last week from my uncle who's had it over 10 years. He got it to learn the guitar and then didn't quite carry on with it. This guitar has kind of been neglected and left for a long time, which means there's some work to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the things that I do to keep my guitars in top shape. We're going to clean it, we're going to polish the frets, hydrate the fretboard, check the action, check the truss rod. There's a whole bunch of things that we need to do with this guitar. I don't even know if it works yet. So we're going to get on with that and we'll see how it goes. Here's what I use when I clean and maintain my guitars. Some wire cutters, a string winder, they're very helpful. It seems like a piece of tut, but honestly, it saves so much time when you're winding up strings and it saves your wrist because it's not at a weird angle when you're constantly cranking up that tuner. I use fret guards. You put these over the frets as you buff it up with 1200 grit sandpaper. Very, very smooth stuff. Not gonna do too much damage with this, but I recommend getting this. It's really, really good. A fret rocker to see if there's any tall frets. This is only helpful if you straightened out your neck. To do that, you want a nice fret ruler. A fret ruler, it can be used to put on the neck itself to see if there's any bowing in the neck. We'll go over that later. To fix bowing in the neck, you're gonna need an Allen key. Now, Allen keys are different according to which guitar you have, so I recommend getting a whole bunch of them so that you're covered. You're gonna to wanna to get some guitar polish. I've got the stuff from Guitar Nomad, um, but there's all kinds of stuff you can get. This is just what I've got lying around. And lastly, you want something to hydrate the fretboard. I like boiled linseed oil, more on that later. I also use a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. These come up everywhere according to pickup height and pickup surrounds and opportunities to come off or whatever. It's good to have these around. Um, so yeah, get some of these, they're really handy. You don't need all of this, but it is handy to have. The bare essentials though, the guitar polish, boiled linseed oil, the string winder, and the wire cutters. String winder plus wire cutters equals this really handy tool from Planet Waves. I love it so very much. My fiance got it for me before she went away for my birthday. I love it, and it just saves so much space in a guitar case if you're gonna change uh, strings on a gig. These are really, really handy. There's so many guitar tools you can get, but this is like a really, 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 really helpful one, so. You know, think about getting one of those if you don't have one already. We're going to be using my uncle's Epiphone Les Paul Special 2, which has been neglected for years. Last time I saw it was 10 years ago in 2011, and it looked basically the same. So it's only got more dust on it and more neglect, so we've got our work cut out for us. But this, I think, would be a good example for some people because the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 is a really good guitar for beginners and even for modders. So this could be a helpful video to show people that even the little cheapy guitars can still be very, very good if you know how to set them up. So, I hope this helps you. This should teach you a lot of what you need to know to get your guitars playing right and keeping them healthy so that they last for a long time. We'll get started, shall we? Upon first inspection, I see this guitar hasn't been used at all. The plastic's still in the pickups and the dust speaks for itself. This is kind of a best case scenario with a guitar like this. If you find something like this on Facebook Marketplace, you can probably talk down the seller because it seems like they don't care about it. So keep that in mind. It also means that you might have some work to do. It's still a neglected guitar. So there's a lot of things which can pop up. It's been rested on the neck for a long time and this has caused the neck to bow slightly along with the tension on the strings with it being left unattended. I know this has been left in a kind of cold room so this means that throughout the years it's been left in there, the room gets colder, gets really cold because nobody's in there, and then it gets hotter in the summer where the window is just beaming into the room. So the neck and the wood has been expanding and contracting like any guitars do, but it hasn't been played and it hasn't been kept up to date. So this means the neck has been all over the place. This neck is bowing. Now this means that the headstock is pulling itself towards the body like this. It means that up by the 12th fret, you're gonna see a lot more distance between the fretboard and the strings compared to the first fret where the distance isn't that much. It's very close. This means that the guitar is gonna be harder to play the higher up the neck we go. It can be corrected by using an Allen key and fixing it in the truss rod. 
The truss rod is a metal beam that goes from the top of the neck all the way to the bottom and it's underneath the fretboard but actually set inside the neck part itself. So you want to get an Allen key and you want to insert it into the top of the headstock here and it's righty tighty lefty loosey rules. So right to tighten if we wanted it to be more towards the body and left to loosen if we wanted it to send it back towards the floor a bit more. In this case, we're going to want to bring it backwards. This is a great time to use the fret ruler if you don't have one. It's going to be a lot harder. You can do this by eyeballing. A lot of people do. There's also gauges you can use. People have like measurements they use coins for to test like all the string lengths or whatever. But with the fret ruler, you can do it without the strings on and you can straighten the neck perfectly and it eliminates the human element of, oh, I'll eyeball it and see how it goes. You have a good tester with the string being left on, but this means you can do it while you're cleaning the guitar, which is what I've done. So the fret ruler, you put it on the board and you check for any gaps in between. Now these ones are kind of weird, they've got two sides. That's because the Gibsons and Fenders of the world have different scale lengths, so this can be put on either way. If you do get one, you'll realize which one works for you. Put it over the frets, check the gaps, and you want to bring it back so that it's basically watertight on the fretboard. And you're going to have to check it again when the strings go back on because the tension will have returned. Fret life. This guitar hasn't been used at all, which is great because it means we don't have to worry too much about if there's any divots in the frets. Divots can be found at the top of the neck where the cowboy chords are typically played. These can be sorted with a fret crowning job where you level the frets and then you crown them around, but that's best done by a professional. If you haven't got divots, then you want to look out for flat spots. Now this can be found all over the neck. Flat spots are caused when you've been bending too much on the neck or just general play wear. Every guitar gets this, so it's not the end of the world. It's just something that you need to keep on top of, like brushing your teeth. There's one more thing with frets you need to check out, and that is if they're all level. Now, this isn't something you need to worry about too much if you've just got the guitar. You will find out eventually once the strings are on. But what I like to do while I've got it here, I will use the fret ruler, get it all set up so that the neck is dead straight, and then I'll use my trusty fret rocker and then rock the fret rocker between three frets. In the middle fret, being the one that rocks. If that middle fret moves and you hear the knocking sound, then that shows you that the fret you're currently resting on is high and would need to be uh, filed down using a block and then crowned. This is something that's best done by a professional, so do that. Onto the cleanup. First order of business is to remove all the strings. With the strings off, we can now get the dust removed, which is so good. This has been in my room for a few days while I've been writing this video and it's been bothering me that I can't clean it just yet. But here we go, we're gonna clean it. I'm gonna use the guitar polish spray, spray it onto a rag. I'm gonna buff out some of the finish just to get it feeling a lot cleaner before I work on it. Because it's gross. While I'm here, I'm gonna take off the plastic to the pickups because it's really satisfying. It should have been done a long time ago, but I get to be the one to do it. Now it's time to do the frets. Now the frets are going to need a lot of work, so just to get them playing as smoothly as they can. There's a lot of rust and dust and grime that's on here. So first order of business is to get the fret guard over the fret and then we're going to get the sandpaper. And we're just going to scrub, we're going to rub, rub, rub all over that fret. Now this, after two dozen times or whatever of restringing the guitar, will cause the frets to go a bit flat. You want to keep the fret as rounded as possible so that the contact from the string is only in a small area. So again, like brushing your teeth, keep on top of your frets and check for if they're going flat. It's pretty harmless though because it's very soft sandpaper so it's not going to be doing too much damage. Also try not to apply too much pressure on the fret guard because it will leave some scratches in the fretboard. So be careful. I find that not a lot of people do this job when it comes to cleaning the frets. But ever since I've started doing it, I can't stop. I feel that getting a nice clean fret means that the string is ringing louder and clearer and cleaner as well. You get so much sweat and grime on these once you start getting gigging. Um, it's really good to just clean off that grime because it can get pretty bad if you don't. So I like to clean my frets rigorously every time. You don't have to every time. I like to though. Now onto a really crucial step, which is hydrating the fretboard. I hydrate the fretboard every time I restring. Again, not essential to do it every time, 
but I do it just so that I know it's been done. So I use boiled linseed oil. There's a lot of debate as to what you should use. You can use lemon oil, you could use lighter fluid, you could use water even. I wouldn't recommend using water. You could use fast prep. I prefer boiled linseed oil because it's only a pound. This one bottle has lasted me nearly six years and I'm only halfway through. On the contrary to that, the lemon oil can cost you three pounds or whatever and you only get an ounce in there and it doesn't last you that long. I've got a lot of guitars and I need them on all of it and I don't even feel it does the best job for the value for money. Yes, it smells better, absolutely, I'll give it that. But personally, I prefer using linseed oil. I dislike fast fret because it smells like keys and it gets dirty quickly. It's a stick that rubs on the strings before and after playing and it's supposed to prolong the life of your strings and when you take the strings off you can put it on the fretboard and on the frets and it's supposed to clean them. I don't think it does that good a job though because the stick gets really dirty and yes you can like cut that stick down but that one job alone is a real pain. I don't like fast fret. Boiled linseed oil is really good, it's cheap, it's effective but it stains everything so be really really careful. I use toilet roll on the fretboard to hydrate the board. Also it cleans up the grime that's got on there from the sandpaper. The sandpaper will leave um, some debris I should say and you'll know that you've still got it on there if the toilet roll comes off a bit grey or black depending on the colour of your sandpaper. So using this and the toilet roll method if it comes back just clean yellow I know the fretboard is fully clean there's no grime on it there's no sandpaper on it and we're good to move on. All of these things I've mentioned, the lemon oil, the fast fret, the linseed oil, you put it on quickly and then you take it off as quickly as you put it on. However, if you've got a really dry board, then you might want to put it on, let it sink in for a bit, wipe it off and then put on another coat and then take it off. It wants to look nice and glossy and feel good, but not too oily because it's going to get into the strings and it's going to kill them really quickly and you would have wasted some money. Last thing to check before we put the strings on is the electronics. Plug it in and get your screwdriver and you want to tap on the pickups. This pickup switch has rhythm, middle and treble. The rhythm is the neck pickup, so tap on that and tap on both pickups, the bridge and neck. And if you're on a rhythm switch, you should only hear the neck. If you're in the middle, you should hear both. And if you're on the bridge, you should only hear the bridge when you tap on both of them. You also want to check the volume pots by turning them up and down. Down should completely cut the signal and up should be really loud. The tone knob, you should hear a nice tinny tap on the pickup. And when you turn down the tone knob, it should sound more like a knock. So that's something to remember. And it also saves you checking and not putting the strings on because I've made that mistake before. You don't want to check while the strings are on because you have to come off if, you have to, if the pickups need to come out. So don't do that. If you hear a loud buzz, make sure you're not close to any speakers or getting any electrical interference. This can be tested by simply moving the guitar out from where you've got it currently. But if you do hear like a really hideous, horrendous sound, then just put it away and take it to get serviced because that needs a whole new can of worms to get the electronics working. It could be something as simple as a loose wire. It could also be a busted pot. So let's be safe and take it to somebody who knows what to do. If you just have a slight hum, it sounds like you're good to go. So yeah, all good. You'll know if it's wrong. Now for the strings, the action. We're nearly there. Once we get the strings up, we'll tune them up to pitch and then we will check the neck relief once again by using the fret ruler and seeing if there's any gaps. It's okay to have a little bit of relief put in towards the body, but we want to check that the action isn't too low or too high. Too high, then the guitar's going to go out of tune when you fret and it's not going to be very comfortable either. You're going to have to be putting more effort into the guitar than previously. But if it's too low, then that means that the frets aren't going to ring nicely. It could cause some buzzing and rattling across the fretboard, which we don't want. So it's important to get this balance perfect. A little trick is to use a one millimeter pick either side of the fretboard. That's going to get you somewhere, but I like to use one of these cards, which actually came with the fret rocker and the fret ruler. I bought them as a set and this has a really good indicator on. I like to use this indicator to tell me how tall the string should be and you can season to taste after that. Action can be adjusted by the bridge. On this guitar it's pretty simple because it's just a flathead screwdriver on this part here but it varies from guitar to guitar, say like a Strat or a Telecaster where they have individual saddles. So if your guitar isn't like this 
just look up by the manufacturer and see if they've got anything for you. Um, it changes from guitar to guitar, but once you know the basics and what moves what, it's a lot easier, so I'd recommend doing that. This guitar is very simple, a flathead screwdriver to raise or lower the bridge, and you haven't got to worry about the individual strings, it's all pretty even, so that's great. The last step is intonation. Intonation is the accuracy of the note on the 12th fret. The 12th fret is an octave of the open string. It's the same note, just higher. So it should be bang on in tune with it. A way to check that is by plugging into a chromatic tuner. The trick here is to use the 12th fret harmonic and then fretting it. Now this will tell you a number of things, if your action's too high or if the bridge saddle is in the wrong place. So you'll know if the action's too high because it's going to be hard to play but the intonation can be changed by moving the saddle forwards or backwards. This one's a bit awkward because it's on the, it's right by the pickup, so it's kind of hard to get in there, but you want to use a flathead screwdriver on this example. Again, it changes from bridge to bridge. So, if the note is too high, then you want to bring it back. If the note is too low, then you want to bring it forward. So once again, play the harmonic on the 12th fret and then fret the 12th fret to hear the difference. You'll see it on the, tuner if which way it is it does develop your ear but i recommend using a tuner just to be sure that you're getting it right and you're not moving on too quickly once the strings are on and i got the action sorted i noticed that they were a little bit too low on the bass side being the e a and d string so what that meant was that i needed to raise the slot somehow so what i did was i had baking soda and super glue put that in the slot let it dry and harden and then i got a file and i filed out that groove a little bit more this is a job that you should leave to a professional. Nut slots are something you have to practice and get wrong a million times before you can start getting them right. Thankfully, I've got my own guitar that I've messed up. This one I did a really good job on, but you definitely want to take it to a professional. Would your guitar need this? Other than that, the guitar's good to go. It's, it's had a clean, the frets have been nicely polished, the fretboard has been hydrated, all the dust has been removed, the action's been set up, the truss rod has been corrected, the electronics works, we have no work to do there, which is fantastic. And yeah, that's the guitar. That was my uncle's Epiphone Les Paul Special 2, uh, which was covered in dust and basically in mint condition once you get that dust off. So knowing what you've learned in this video, it should at least get your guitar looking and playing nice and remaining healthy for years to come. These things can outlive us if we look after them. If we don't, then it's unfortunate because these guitars can live forever. I mean, that's what we're aiming for, right? I hope this was helpful. I remember when I was starting out guitar and I would watch videos like this all the time and it really helped me diagnose what was going on with my instruments and it saved me a lot of money in the long run because I didn't have to constantly wait for a setup or anything like that. That's what I do to look after my instruments. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have a guitar which needed a lot of work, let's share that story. Like what's the, uh, what's the craziest guitar job you had to have done or do yourself maybe. Uh, many thanks if you stuck it out this long. I'm Ollie Borman and I will see you in the next one. Bye.